Morning. Did you sleep okay? Yeah, like a log. I didn't. I had this weird dream. I dreamt that Betty's cat was attacking me and I couldn't get it off my face. Do you think that's Freudian? It's got to be subconscious guilt, that, hasn't it? You've got nothing to feel guilty about. No, that's you, remember. You've got nothing to feel guilty about. I am a cat killer. That cat was on its last legs. Me and Jace had a future. I lay next to him last night, wide awake, just listening to him breathe. What, so you slept like a wide awake log? I always thought it would be him who betrayed me. You haven't betrayed him. I kissed his boss. You attempted, but you resisted. Uh, no. Resisting is when you don't do something. It's just one little kiss. I, I don't do that sort of thing. No, I don't cheat on people. I've got higher standards than that. What am I going to do when I get left alone with him again? Why do you think you'll be tempted again? No, but... Well, he might. He's already doing this whole cat and mouse thing with me. Oh, don't mention the C word. A lonely old lady woke up this morning to an empty litter tray thanks to me. Sean, this is serious. Sorry. I tell you what. From now on, I will make sure that you're never left alone with Charlie. Every time you've got to work late, I'll be there by your side like a little guardian angel. That's a promise. Thank you, Sean. Right, well, that's your problem solved. What about me? What are we going to do about my problem? You could try electric shock treatment. Oh, ha ha, very funny, Jay boy. What is the problem? I feel guilty about Betty's cat being put down. We'll get another one. Oh, it's that simple, is it? Where am I going to get a cat that could ever come near to replacing Betty's beloved Marmaduke? I don't know, give that Tim fellow a call. You fancy him anyway, don't you? Well, yeah, I suppose I could. Yeah, I could. Red. What, on bacon? Yeah. Oh, no. Brown on bacon, red on sausage. No, no, no. I like red on both. Is that a southern thing? No, it's not. No. <laughs> All right, here's a teaser for you, then. What does Jamie prefer? Don't know. Ah, you see, he's a brown man, and so's Ron. Ah, he's a Spanish omelette man this morning. He is indeed, but it proves that it ain't a southern thing. Bet Frankie's gonna miss him, ain't you? Yeah. Well, we both will. Do you love Frankie? What happened to talking about sauce? Don't you hate it the way they put it in little bowls with a poncy spoon? <laughs> Loads of extra work just so posh people don't have the trauma of squeezing a bottle. It's that little farty noise they're afraid of, you know? <laughs> Frankie loves that. And I love her. More than any woman I've ever met. Mind you, the neck of a brown sauce bottle can be a scary sight sometimes. Well, he's very hot on that, you know? Do you love Jamie? Well, would I be here? I am. Yeah, well, I'm still making my mind up. I don't want either of them getting hurt, you know that, don't you? Well, then why do this? You ever been skiing, Liam? No. Well, when you take a tumble, it done half hurt, but that's the most exciting part about it. Swerve this, swerve that, you don't have to take a tumble. Not if you know what you're doing and you're careful enough. What, like we are? And when you finally get to the bottom, you just take your skis off, pick them up, and go home. OK? Speaking of which, better make tracks soon, haven't we? Oh, hello. I'm after a room. A double, please. Yeah, just one night. You OK? Yeah. Just booking a bed and breakfast. Won't be long. Sorry, yeah, Stubbs, Charlie, Stubbs. Thank you. Have you heard the good news? No. Shelley Unwin has left the building. She's finally taken my advice and gone to get professional help. Right, well, how long will she be gone? We went to see the consultant yesterday. They kept her in overnight, but they reckon the best thing for her is a couple of weeks away. A couple of weeks? R&R, &R, they call it. I'm driving her up to Scotland. Gonna do some B&Bs in the Highlands. You're going with her? Of course I am. The great outdoors. A perfect cure. I said the perfect cure. Now that means me, you and Betty are holding the fort. But hey, we're doing that anyway, aren't we? Hey, 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 it's just when I'll be chipping in, you know. And we can always get in a temp if needs be. But the important thing is, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Other mothers get shoplifters and joyriders. I get fish rustlers. My conscience is clear. My daughter has a police caution against her and your conscience is clear. 
As clear as that tank. I wish I'd pleaded not guilty. Then you'd have ended up in court like him. The only reason I pleaded guilty was because I thought... I thought I was guilty. You were guilty. You stole someone's fish. We didn't steal them. We, we liberated them. They weren't your property. You'd no right to liberate them. They were dying. Did we not have a right to save them? If next door had a dog and they were treating it so badly that it was dying and you knew that it was dying... And they ignore you when you tell them it's dying. What would you do? Would you lie in bed and listen to it howl in pain all night or would you take it to a vet and save its life? I'd call the RSPCA. Well, yeah, OK, but if I decided to take it to the vet and save its life, would you call me a thief? No. The only difference here is fish can't howl. When you breathe through your gills, no one can hear you scream. I give up. I'm going to work. I'm really proud of you, you know. Well, I couldn't done it without you, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> How are you, Jay? Good morning, Mr. Stubbs. Mr. Um... Barnard, you fitted a bedroom wardrobe for me a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Is there a problem? I think there might be. I had a phone call from a woman yesterday. She claimed she was doing a customer satisfaction survey. Oh, yeah? Where was she from? I don't know. But when I told her I was completely satisfied, she led me to believe that you'd been sleeping with my wife. I haven't touched your wife. I'd have you arrested if you had. She's been dead for 18 months. What does she sound like, this woman? Middle-aged and drunk. Does that description fit anyone who might have a grudge against you? Yeah. Yeah, it does, as a matter of fact. And she won't get away with it. Thanks for staying in with us last night. I don't know what Dad's playing at. Why is he working away on the night that Warren flies to Spain? Uh, he'd have stayed if I'd kicked up a big enough fuss. I didn't want him to think I was that bothered. But you were bothered. I knew you were, so should he have. Morning. You made good time. Have I? Yeah. It's meant to be a big pile-up on the M1. Ah, yeah, well, I took the scenic route through Buxton, didn't I? Mm. So, have you heard from number two, son, yet? Yeah, yeah, he phoned last night. Everything's great, apparently. Good, good. All right, then, babe. I'll see you later on, eh? See ya. Until last week. Right, then. Are you coming in for a cup of tea? Or are you going to let Leanne tell you how much she missed you? She can't have missed me that much. She's still wearing the same get-up. Morning. Where have you been? I crashed my mate Stacey's in our school, pal. You coming in? You. Are you trying to make a laughing stock out of me? No. Isn't it enough that I've got a Polish hip? It'll give you a bit of extra mobility, Blanche. Get you out of the house. And it's very easy to manoeuvre. I drove it all the way home from work. Well, you can drive it all the way back again, as I'm not getting in it. Just give it a try, Blanche. You might like it. You didn't pay good money for it, did you? No. I borrowed it just to see you through your recovery. I'd rather be housebound. It's Shelley's mother. Are you sure? Of course it's Shelley's mother, isn't it? Always Shelley's mother. She's got the contact details for people we've done jobs for, then she's been ragging them up and slagging me off. Well, come to think of it, she was hanging around the yard the other day. Yeah, there's a pile of invoices gone missing. She must have walked off with them. Well, what are you going to do? Don't know. I haven't got time to think about it now. Got to pick Shelley up, then we've got to pack her bags, and we're out of here. But while we're away, I want you to chase up any unpaid invoices. Oh, come on, Stubbsy, that's the secretary's job. You can take the week off if you like, but I'm not paying you. Right. If anyone else rings up to complain, just explain the situation to well, her. What is the situation, mate? The situation is, me and Shell are being driven mad by a lunatic of a mother, but I'm not going to let her split us up. <laughs> nah, don't say I never give you out. Cheers. Cheers. Not the first thing you've had handed on a plate to your eh, Kirk, you lad? You've really fallen on your feet this time. Why? What's happened? He's come into an inheritance. What kind of inheritance? The family business. His mum and dad are retiring to Cyprus and they want to leave the kennels to the kids. Like you do. You lucky beggar. Only thing I ever inherited was psoriasis. How much is it worth? It's got to be a few, Bob. Retirements in the sun don't come cheap. But you've not heard the best of it yet.
There's more. <laughs> Maria doesn't want her share. So Kurt's getting the lot on her plate. <laughs> Do you want any sauce on that cake? Are you barmy? That place is a little gold mine. But Maria don't want out to do with it. Yeah, my days as a kennel maid are well gone. No, but you don't have to work there. You just pocket half the blaming profits. Yes, which you're entitled to. Or sell it. Yeah, ask him to buy you out. She's told him he can have it now. Hey, hey, hey. You've not signed out, have you? No. Well, tell him that you've changed your mind, that you got carried away in the, at the moment. Well, maybe I did speak a bit too soon, eh? How's Betty been? Quiet. Have you spoken to Tim? He won't put me through. I had to leave a message. I'm not very hopeful. Well, I've had some good news. Charlie and Shelley are off on holiday to Scotland. So that means she's getting better? And I might not need a guardian angel after all. Oh. You ready? Check the coast is clear first. There's no one around. There might be someone in the back room. Then walk right past them. Everyone's just pleased you've been out and about. I don't want anyone seeing me. You look fine. Please tell me. Just take it for a test drive. See if you can get to the corner shop. I'm facing the wrong way. Ah, well, it sometimes won't turn left, so you'll have to go to the corner shop the long way, round the block. You've put me in a second-hand shopping centre cast-off with faulty steering. See if you like it first. We can sort the steering out afterwards. <sighs> there. Come on, everyone's in the bar. Is there anyone looking? No. You're in my way. Can't you go around? I can't. Can you not move this van off the pavement? You'll have to wait a minute. Come on. No. no. Hey, get a move no. on, buddy. Come on. No. There's nothing unusual about a woman wearing sunglasses in July. You didn't see the way he looked at me. He knows something's up. So what? Who cares? He'll be telling everyone that you're knocking me about. It'd be like walking into that door all over again. Well, he could always lose the glasses. Go downstairs and tell them the truth. Well, to be ashamed of, is it? People have work done on them the whole time these days. I don't want anyone to know. Be like admitting I'm not good enough. I just want the bruising to go away. And I want to walk down those stairs, the new me. Which is why I've booked her some time away. Away where? Cleared it with Fred. Jason's looking after the business. You and me are going to go to Scotland. For a week or two, while I get over your surgery. We're touring the Highlands. Miles away from this pub, your interfering mother, and all those prying eyes. She was scared and she was hiding something. And the way he was dragging her about the place. You reckon he's hitting her again? Well, Fred's been on her to see a doctor for a while. Charlie reckons that he's finally persuaded her to go. And he tells us this morning. This morning? that she had to spend last night in hospital having treatment. After the event, in other words. Yeah. I mean, whatever's wrong with Shelley, it's in our mind, right? So what kind of psychological treatment is going to keep her in hospital for one night? She spent the night in hospital. It's because he put her there. Yeah, and now he's taking her to Scotland. You've got to help us, Kieran. Oh, listen. If he's knocking her about, I might be looking for another job, but he'd be looking for another set of teeth. 
couldn't go round, I couldn't get out. I've never felt so humiliated. <sighs> Maybe if we got the steering fixed. No, I want no more to do with it. If I'm too much of a burden on you as it is... It's not that. If you're fed up of fetching and carrying for me, then get me some crutches. I'd rather hobble around on them than take my chances on that thing. I just thought it was worth a try. <laughs> Charlie? Yeah? I don't want to go. Some time away. Just the two of us. Why wouldn't you want to go? I'm just not ready for it. You promised me. You promised me this surgery would make all the difference. It will once it's healed. Well, it can heal while you're driving around Scotland. I don't want to go on holiday looking like this. So what would you rather do? Sit in here for another couple of weeks. Just until it's healed. <laughs> you selfish bitch. Don't talk to me like that. After all the trouble I've gone to, all the expense, buying that new face for you, sorting out your holiday, sorting out work, after everything I've had to put up with, you would rather sit here on your fat backside feeling sorry for yourself. Just for a couple of days. It's gone too far now, Shell. You're turning into some kind of agoraphobic. Oh, I'm not scared of open spaces. I'm just not ready to face people yet. So Scotland's perfect. Some of the finest open spaces on the planet. Nobody we know, nobody on our back, a completely different country from your mother. I can't help the way I feel. Can't you? No. You sure? Yes! How do you feel about me? You keep telling me you love me. I do. You'll do anything for me. I would. Then do this. <sighs> Pack your bag and pull yourself together. What's up? I've been suspended from my job. Well, what happened to Lillison until proving guilty? I was caught red-handed using one of their skips. Even if I'm not guilty of theft, I'm guilty of doing a foreigner. I'll be lucky if they don't sack me. Oh, so are you starting to regret it now? Evil triumphs when good men do nothing, Mrs Platt. And Scooter's not the type to do nothing. Good, because now he's got some time on his hands, he can mend my fence. Yeah, no problem, Mrs Platt. Do you know, I knew this would happen. Sooner or later, you can't help disapproving of her boyfriends, can you? Sarah. He's broken the law, and he's broken my fence. But until the day he breaks your heart, I'll put up with him. Scooter will never break my heart. I don't suppose there's any chance you could break his, is there? Would make a change. I'm not even going to answer that. So what's for tea? That's it then. Okay. Hey, Michelle. You okay? Yeah? Fine. She must have forgotten something. We'll be gone in a minute. <laughs> so, what do you say? Flight's great, weather's great, hotel's great, club's great. Oh, good. Well, that's great, isn't it? I'm missing him already, Danny. When can we go and visit? Do us a favour, I'll have let him get unpacked first, eh? Yeah, and she's wearing those shades indoors as well. I know. But look, they're going to be leaving by the back door in about two minutes. Yeah. Kirk, I've had to think about the kennels. Me too. I don't think I can run them on me own. Oh, you'll manage. And you can always take someone on if you have to. Yeah, but can you imagine our Kirk being someone's boss? It's a lot of responsibility being a gaffer, you know. Yeah, which is why I've changed my mind. I'm not going to leave it all to you. Oh, that's great, sis. Mum and Dad will be made up. What, so you're going to pack in your job at Ardrey? No. Well, there's no need. If you do all the books and stuff and your nights stay over... Oh, hang on a minute, Kirk, hang on. I'm not packing in my job at Ardrey, but I'm not stepping foot in them kennels. <laughs> Well, do you want me to bring the books to you? No. So what do you want? I want to sell up. And then we can split the profits 50-50. I can't do it, Charlie! You 
can do it. You went to the clinic, you can go on holiday. I can't! You spent last night somewhere different, you can do the same tonight. Please, sir, give me a couple of days. Tell you hate me! Break this cycle of it, chills me. I don't want to go, you can't make me go! You want a bat? I don't want to go, let me in! No! Oh, oh, let me in, let me in! No, you're coming with me. 